happy Sabbath. Good evening, good morning from wherever you're watching us from. Thank you for joining us again for this wonderful uh, lesson study. And we are still doing the book Ephesians. Uh, today we are going to discuss a rather interesting topic. But before we get there, I'd just like to ask that one of us to pray and then we continue. Zamatia, please do us the honors. Okay. Let's pray. <laughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for yet another time you've given unto us to be able to come together and discuss the lesson for this uh, week. We commit ourselves into your mighty hands that, Lord, may you be with us. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher. May we be able to have a wonderful discussion as we talk about the unified body of Christ. Um, Lord, forgive us our sins. Be with each and every one of us. And uh, by the end of the day, may this lesson be a blessing to us and to our viewers. Be with us now and forevermore. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, we are also privileged to have an all ladies panel today. Uh, I'll start by you, with you. Please tell us your name and greet us. <laughs> God is good. My oh. name is Becky Omundi. I'm happy to be here. Welcome and study with us. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Mm. My name is Janet Chamatia. Mm. I'm also happy to be here. Amen. Thank you. I'm Rumona Pio, and we'll be going through this study. The Unified Body of Christ. Such an interesting topic. Our, our memory text comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. And I'll just read from the version that um, the lesson writer has put for us. Ephesians chapter 4, 11, all the way to 12. And he gave the apostles the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. You know, there is always this competition of who is doing better, who came first, the situation of chicken and egg that sometime back we talked about. Uh, and they, it's the same here. And we are told uh, a fable by one Dali that he wrote, it, and it goes like this, the belly and the feet were arguing about their importance. So the belly kept saying that, you know, um, the belly kept saying that, you know what? I keep, I am much stronger. I've carried, sorry, the legs keep saying that they are stronger, so they carry the stomach around. And the stomach replies and says that, but my good friends, if I didn't take in the food, then you wouldn't have the st the, that strength to carry over. And that's the, rather the thing that we are going to look at, um, the distractions that we get and the unity that Paul talks to us about. So Paul's emphasis is that we, he uses the human body to just... Um, to describe the church and to make a spiritual point to help us know that the church is the body of Christ and it is composed of various parts for different abilities. So essentially what Paul will be telling us in this lesson is that there is no body part that is important. The stomach is not important than the feet or the feet are not important than the stomach. The, among the things that we are going to look at are the unity of the church is, and its importance in the identity, life, and mission that we are called to. Then another thing that we are going to look at is how to achieve church unity. And the last thing is we are going to delve into the spiritual gift and their importance in the unity, life, and mission of the church. And especially number three, because it's one of those contentious issues in the Adventist church. Becky, I'll just ask from the Sunday part, um, where we are concentrating mostly on the book of Ephesians. When we, Paul talks about one, one faith, one body, one baptism, how, how can we achieve that as a church? Um, thank you very much. Mm. In our previous study, we highlighted Jesus' prayer. Mm. Um, when Jesus prayed that, I pray that they be one, just as you and I are one that the world may know that you sent me. Mm. So when we see Paul writing about unity, we see him um, just um, uh, highlighting further that which Jesus had said. Mm. He's trying to lay emphasis on the need for unity. 
And uh, we are in that particular space in time when there's a lot of clamor for unity of faith. There's a lot of clamor for unity between church and state. Mm -hmm. So within the church itself, the various factions, mm -hmm. the various uh, denominations and mm -hmm. religious um, outfits mm -hmm. want to unify. And we ask ourselves, is that really the way to go? And on the other hand, we also have a situation where now this unified church mm -hmm. wants to unify with the state. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about unity, to some people it sounds as something that we should not even <clears throat> be pursuing because unity speaks um, anathemas to them. Unity speaks to them about apostasy. It speaks mm -hmm. to them about um, conforming to standards that are not mm -hmm. in their that are not acceptable by Christ. But when you look at what Paul begins by saying in Ephesians 4 verse 1, he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you are called. So that every other statement Paul makes from verse 2 to verse 16 mm. is to further enunciate this verse 1 about walking worthy of the calling. Mm. Jesus desired that you be one. So Paul is bringing the concept of unity as uh, insofar as it helps us to walk worthy of this calling mm -hmm. of faith. Mm -hmm. So when Paul is talking about this unity, further in verse 2 he says, With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Mm. So he actually brings out the things that are going to lead to this unity. Mm -hmm. He highlights lowliness and gentleness, mm. or we may say humility, mm. with long suffering, patience, bearing with one another in love. Mm. And it's important to highlight at this point that Paul is not saying by conforming, mm. by being like them, mm. by being, by, by, by devising strategic plans to meet them. No. He's simply pointing us to human behavior mm. as directed by the spirit mm. that we would borrow heavily from Galatians 5, 9, <clears throat> 5 22 that says, but the fruit of the spirit is this. Mm. So in essence, Paul is actually calling out and saying mm. this fruit of the spirit manifested in you mm -hmm. will show that you're working worthy of the calling that you've been given mm. and will maintain mm. the unity. Mm. And I love the fact that Matthew chapter 5 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, mm. not the peacekeepers. <laughs> you get so when we, we want be. to keep peace, mm. we are going to use it, do it our way. Mm. We're going to find, we're going to, to sign pact, you know, like mm. the UN Charter, the Pacta Song Servada, like mm. those things that we've signed in mm. the place of war to mm. make us have peace. But Jesus is calling us to be peacemakers. Mm. Now, peacemakers, when you make, it's an act. Mm -hmm. It's going to be made by our long suffering, our patience, our mm. forbearing. Mm. And that's what Paul is alluding towards mm. the unity of the spirit. Amen. Thank you. So I'll just, mm, I just need a clarification from you. Mm. When Paul is talking about the unity of the church, mm -hmm. he's not talking about the unity of the Seventh-day Adventist church. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the worldwide church. So so long as you are a Christian, mm -hmm. you need to be unified. You see, when Paul is talking about the unity of the church, mm. we, we get it in Ephesians 1 verse 22. He mm -hmm. says, And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. To the church. This is the first, like the first instance church is referred to in Ephesians. Mm. When this church is being referred to, it's being referred to uh, in regard to the people who have been redeemed. Mm. Remember in verse 7, it says that in him we have redemption mm. through his blood, forgiveness mm. of sin. Mm. So that these people who have been forgiven, these people that verse chapter 2 refers to as no longer walking mm. according to the world, well, but yeah. now members of the household of faith. Amen. These are the people that now Paul is, is referring, referring to, to their unity. Mm. These ones that Christ died for. Mm. As you have rightly stated it, not a particular denomination, denomination mm. but those who have recognized they have mm. been redeemed mm. and are now walking mm. worthy of the high calling mm. that Paul now introduces us to Ephesians 4 verses 1. Yes. So that we are mm. not going to sit and say, mm. we as members of new life, we want to be united. And so what are, how do we go about it? One, two, three. Mm. No, Paul is bringing out the concept of unity as a result mm. of the outworking of the spirit so that we are not working to be unified mm. 
the spirit working in us automatically makes us unified mm. so that it's not a strategic plan towards unity mm. but unity becomes a consequence of god's working in our hearts amen, and in our lives amen last time we were talking about spiritual blessings and i believe that this is part of those spiritual blessings mm -hmm. like uh you know we just need to align ourselves with the will of god and this is one of those spiritual blessings that we will be able to enjoy amen. but so long as you are not work aligning with god's agenda then it is a bit hard. Uh, Janet, um, Becky has talked to, uh, not Becky, but Paul has told us that humility, gentleness, and patience are part, or, or rather the attributes that they achieve unity in a church. What other attributes do you think can help us achieve unity in the church? Um, I think when we put aside selfishness Amen. as Amen. a church, mm. we'll be able to mm -hmm. be unified. Mm -hmm. um, those things that divide us, like in our recent time, we have tribalism. Mm. You know, we look down on each other, mm. we segregate each other in, in terms of class. Mm. You know, this person has is not on my of my class, so mm. we cannot relate. Mm -hmm. You know, we are not in the same thinking capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm more learned than this other person. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things which are bringing division mm -hmm. in church. Mm -hmm. Yet, we are being told if we put ourselves, we know self is what, in fact, even put Satan out of heaven mm -hmm. because of selfishness. Amen. And we see God on the other hand. Mm -hmm. He's unselfish. His God is so unselfish mm -hmm. that he decided to give his son to mm -hmm. die for yes. our sins. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that Paul is telling the church. Mm -hmm. Please put away unselfishness. Mm -hmm. If you put away unselfishness, you guys will be unified. Actually, mm -hmm. that's the most thing which divides us as mm -hmm. a church. Mm -hmm. So um, to add on what Becky has said, mm -hmm. we are learning that there's this branch, you know, the different types of branches mm. and all these branches you know they serve one head mm. in as much that we are different in diversity all of us are different mm. in diversity there is unity mm. if we could just remove the selfishness mm. that really separates us from you know try to se to separate us from others mm -hmm. because god is love Amen. god Amen. is not selfish mm. so um also we see divisions in the church dishonor the religion of Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Christ d does not want division. Mm -hmm. He left his church as one mm -hmm. when he was, you know, um, when he ascended to heaven and gave the, the power of the Holy Spirit to the disciples. He told them to be one. Mm -hmm. You know, divisions really bring a lot of, um, it makes us as a church not to grow mm -hmm. because if Becky is not doing what I'm, I want her to do mm -hmm. or we are not, you know, moving in the same level, then I cannot work with her. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, am I not pulling down the church? Mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. So I think um, for us to understand what the unity of the spirit is, it's for us as believers mm -hmm. to serve in spirit and in the same hope. Mm -hmm. Because if we are divided, we really miss the, the mark which Christ expects us to share the word out there. Mm -hmm. I cannot go out there and share the word of God if I'm not in the same unity with my sister. Mm -hmm. It's really useless. Why should I go and, and preach Jesus out there and yet I'm not in the same page with my brother or my Amen. sister? Amen. Amen. Um, Becky, um, Paul mentions to us again, humility, gentleness, and patience. Uh, these are not things the world accepts nowadays mm -hmm. because if you are a humble, you look very stupid. Mm -hmm. If you are a patient person, you know, they, there is this new saying in the, in the world, it applies everywhere. You don't waste time. You go. But Paul is calling the on the church to do what? Have patience, mm -hmm. to be gentle. How can we apply these attributes that Paul has talked to us about without... Um, mixing with what the world is telling us without looking like we are foolish, we don't know what you are doing, we are wasting time by being patient. You know, we, when we are being gentle, it's like we are letting people override us. You know, how can we just apply these things? Um, thank you very much. When, when Paul writes again to the Corinthians, mm. he underscores the fact that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are mm -hmm. perishing, mm -hmm. but to us who are being saved, mm -hmm. it is eternal life. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and again he writes and say that I'm not ashamed of the gospel mm-hmm. for it is the power of God to salvation for they that believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we look at the dictates of scripture, mm-hmm. it might appear that they are foolish to us. Mm-hmm. Especially when someone is telling you humility, how mm-hmm. how how do you even become humble? Humbling. But I think it's because mm-hmm. we have not understood mm-hmm. we have not understood the true meaning of humility. humility. For some of us, think that humility is just um, humility is being trampled on, mm-hmm. is being quiet there when people are walking all someone over you. Someone has wronged you, but you're like you can't even talk to them yes and 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 that is not humility mm. because the word of god equally tells us that when you want to present an offering mm. and remember that someone has something against you you, you leave first. it at the altar and mm. go back to mm. them and I, I interestingly learned something that jesus forgave them because they did not know what they were doing mm. so we 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 expect people to sometimes when someone hurts you and you just want to pass it Pa- pa- gloss over it like it's mm. nothing. Mm. It's not an act of humility. Mm. It's fa- it's failing to face issues and address them mm. as they are. Mm. And the best example, Christ is telling us that we need to be as meek mm. as a dove, a dove mm. but as wise as a serpent. Mm. So that when Jesus was, Jesus went into the temple and found the money changers, mm. Some, a wrong conception of humility mm. would suppose that he stood at the door and say, hi guys, this mm. is my father's house of prayer. Mm. Stop what you're doing. Mm. But Jesus did not do that. Mm-hmm. He simply went, mm-hmm. turned the money changers tables upside down. Mm. It is his conduct that drew their attention to mm. what was going on. Mm-hmm. And so in, in our in our um, life experiences, we need to address issues head on mm. without hiding behind the gab of mm. humility. Mm. And this has led to the downfall of many. Many mm. are people in places of employment. Your mm. supervisor is expecting, dem- is demanding things from mm-hmm. you that are not even in your job description. Mm-hmm. And because you want to appear humble, you're there waiting to be sexually harassed. Mm. You're there waiting to be overworked. Mm. You're there. Yet you go complaining to those you cannot mm. address your situation. Mm. So mm. we are not called to a false sense of humility. Mm-hmm. Humility is that you recognize this is wrong. This is wrong mm-hmm. and address it. Mm-hmm. And the only way you address it is because you recognize that you also fallible. As man you can fall. Mm-hmm. As a man you have um shortcomings, mm-hmm. you're not a jack of all trades, you're mm-hmm. not a messiah mm-hmm. and you need help. Mm-hmm. Humility is us, you and I recognizing mm-hmm. that we need help and mm-hmm. seeking it mm-hmm. and not putting a show that mm-hmm. we are mm-hmm. all together mm-hmm. lovely put up together to Mm. face things Mm. and gentleness of course Jesus Christ tells us, take my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and mm-hmm. lowly. Mm-hmm. So Christ telling us that he is a gentle, mm-hmm. we can only learn it from him. Mm-hmm. The world is abrasive, mm-hmm. it is rash, and mm-hmm. everyone seems to be choosing the path of hurting people. Mm-hmm. But Jesus is calling us to gentility as a dove. He's mm-hmm. calling us to that place where we can learn these issues. Mm-hmm. In fact, the Ellen White writes that Christianity will make a man a gentleman. Mm. And it's not on the front of romance mm-hmm. alone. Mm. But the way you carry yourself, the poise, the way you treat people will automatically bring them around mm. you. And that is the unity that we desire. Mm. And if you look at patience, mm. I don't know the best lesson on patience other than <laughs> the second coming of Christ mm. that you have been waiting mm. for. Mm. And when the more you move away from your date of baptism, mm. <laughs> the more you feel like he's delaying mm. and the temptation to fall mm-hmm. comes you like, ah, I can just sin a little, I'll, I'll show up again mm. tomorrow. But when you recognize that the second coming of Christ is immanent, mm. then patience become a virtue. And mm. you're able to become patient with each other. Mm. Uh, because Sister Janet is church clerk, now she cannot start harassing us mm. because we are, we are not doing things the way she wants. She mm. has to wait for us to get to that place she wants mm-hmm. us to be so that mm-hmm. the church can function mm-hmm. as God intended it. Mm-hmm. So if you go to the world for lessons, <laughs> we will find and YouTube channels. Helpful. They are there. Mm-hmm. A thousand and one ways mm-hmm. of doing things. But none comes closer to the Bible when it comes to ordering human behavior. Amen. Amen. Just before we move to the Monday part, Janet, how can we be f- uh, how can we be forbearing Christians? We've talked about uh, gentleness, patience. There's someone who's just listening to us and they're like, hey, <laughs> I'm not gentle, I'm not patient. How can we be forbearing as Paul is encouraging us to? Um, let me give an example mm. about myself. Mm. Um, 
I used to be very judgmental. <laughs> true, true. Mm-hmm. Used to small, small, small things. You know, you're like, ah, oh, why is this thing not happening? Like the this, like this. Supposed to. Be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one day when I was traveling in Amatatu and mm-hmm. somebody stepped on me, mm-hmm. and I just asked myself, instead of being mad, what if this person was pushed? Mm-hmm. Then he happened to, you know, step, step on, on me. Mm-hmm. I just had to look on the other side. Mm-hmm. What if it was me who was doing this to someone? Would yes. I want somebody to forgive me? Mm-hmm. So um, I had to change my attitude mm-hmm. with my surrounding. Mm-hmm. And I think it was God who was, you know, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit speaking to me mm-hmm. and telling me this, some of the things you need to change mm-hmm. in your life. Mm-hmm. Instead of judging someone, mm-hmm. first think about it and ask yourself questions. Okay, this person was supposed to meet me and he or she is late. Mm. Could it be there's something which has made him or her not to come mm. on time? Mm. So um, I can just say it will take time. It cannot mm. be easy because there are people like, look at the example of Peter. Peter was a very angry man. Mm. He, anything, you just pull out his sword and we are ready to deal with you, you know? Yes, yes. But you can imagine somebody like Peter being humble. Mm. Somebody like Peter turning a leaf on some things. It's a work in progress. Mm. He used to have even arguments with Paul. You know, Mm. those things are there. Mm. But um, it is us to allow, have a teachable spirit. Let me use that word. If you don't have a teachable spirit, Mm. you'll never change. Mm. So if we allow the spirit of God and the people around us and the surroundings that we are in, it teaches us. We are told when you look at the trees, you look at you know the wonders of God. There's something you'll you'll get a lesson from mm. it. So and also when Christ was on earth, he used so, such things. You mm. know the wheat, the tears, mm. to even give a, you know parables so that people could understand what it meant. So for us, I would uh, say let's have a teachable spirit. Amen. If you have Amen. a teachable spirit, we'll be able to you know have patience. You'll be able to be you know. Uh, looking at things and having these other attributes mm. that we need to have as a Christian. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that in this lesson we are going to learn Paul t- telling us that we need to move from being a child to actually grow up yes. <laughs> to be an adult. <laughs> we move to the minding part together as one in the one. And I'll read the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, verse 1 to 4. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you are called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one space, just as you are called in one hope of your calling. Becky, you know one of the things that you get to learn when you are in the baptism class is the unity of the God the Father, God the Son, the divinity, and how they work together as one. And here we are talking, Paul is just reminding us, one body, one spirit, you know, one God. Please talk to us about the oneness that Paul is talking about when he's making reference to the divinity. Thank you very much. Mm. So um, Paul is bringing to us, uh, we've seen Paul using several imagery Mm, in mm, the book of Ephesians. mm. And when we get to Ephesians chapter 4 that you rightly read, he he, he, he brings us to appreciate a particular aspect of faith mm. that we would call a fundamental belief to mm, us mm. that we are taken back to Genesis 1 mm. during creation mm. our memory is called to John chapter 1 mm. verse 1 that famous verse in the beginning mm. was the word and the mm. word was God and the word was God mm. and in this instance he says there is one body mm. there is one spirit just as you are called in one hope of mm. your calling. But you know, interestingly, this idea of oneness does not just show up out of nowhere. Paul had already made an allusion to it Mm. in Ephesians 2 Mm. verse 14, Mm. where he says, for he himself is our peace, who has made both one, Mm. and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Separation. Verse Mm. 15, Mm. having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of the commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. peace. Mm. So when Paul is bringing to us the concept of oneness in verse 4, 
is actually now talking to people who have grown. The way you've said grown ups. Mm. In verse one to three would have been about milk, consuming mm. milk, mm. being told that mm. you are no longer sinners. Mm. But from verse four he begins by telling us, Wake up, this mm. is there's a way in which we need to walk mm. and this is it. Mm. So when we're talking about the spirit that we are called one lord one faith one baptism one god and father mm. of all paul is trying to bring the concept trying to crystallize the mm. whole creation story and redemption story into one mm. he had been perpetually referring to the grace of god mm. and father of our lord mm. jesus christ mm. saying the holy spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance mm. and in the mind of the ephesian surrounded by idolaters mm. there is the temptation to perceive mm. that are we talking about three people mm -hmm. we have a god mm. who is the creator who created mm. all things through christ mm. then we have christ jesus who is the redeemer mm. and then we have the holy spirit who is the guarantee of inheritance mm. but in verse 4 mm. in cementing the belief he actually comes and tells them wait a minute here mm. you're walking worthy of the calling by showing gentleness, long-suffering, humility mm. in the spirits being united mm. because there is one Lord, mm. there is one Father, mm. there is one Spirit. Mm. So we are not setting standards in diversity. Mm. We are only setting one standard. Mm. This one standard is applicable to God, God. the Father, the, the Son, Son, the Spirit. The Spirit. You mm. are not now going to say, you mm. remember there was this controversy of, I was baptized by Paul, I was mm. baptized by, by Apollos. Apollos. So no mm. one is going to come and say, I've been saved by God the Father. <laughs> or I've been saved by God the, the Spirit. Spirit. I have been saved by, mm. by God the Son. Mm. No, Paul comes and crystallizes all this and say, mm. you have to walk worthy of this high calling of faith. Mm. There's only one God, mm. there's one Father, there's one Lord, there's one baptism. Mm. So that this controversy of with which baptism are, are you baptized, baptized? Mm. is settled. There's one. So it has to be the only one. If it is not, then there's no baptism mm. in the first in the first instance. Mm. And then he says that there is now one father mm. who is above all. Mm. And that I can't help but remember again the allusions on heavenly places, mm. powers of the air. So he says that above all these principalities and might and dominion, there is only one father. Amen. And Amen. settling that from the outset, from the mindset of an Ephesian, you're able to understand where you're going mm. because you have now a settled faith. Mm. The faith, one baptism that you have received, mm. there is one God, there is one Lord, there is mm. one Spirit, mm. and it sets you in the right standard. And even for us, recalling my days in the baptismal class, this mm. makes more sense that you are not dividing attention between gods <laughs> but you are serving the lord, lord god, god almighty Amen. manifesting himself to reach you at your personal level mm. when you are sinful when you are nothing he mm. created you mm. when you fell he mm. formed there was a savior in place Amen. and when the mm. savior went to prepare a place for you the spirit was left to guide mm. you and it's just comforting for Amen. us Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, Janet I don't know how it makes you feel to as a Christian to just realize that it is one God, one Father, and one Holy Spirit, and one, and together they work as one. It's not like Becky says, "Akuna diversity." At you now, the Spirit is on the other side; the Son is on the other side. How does that make you feel as a Christian? Um. Wow. <laughs> when I think about it, you know, God the Father, the Son, the, and the Holy Spirit. They, il, they, they each of them in, individually. They're diverse in their own, you know. Mm. Um, how can I put it? In their roles. Mm. They are all different. Mm. But they are one. Yes. In other words, even when they were thinking of having, creating the universe, you know, in the beginning, God. You mm. know, they are both together. Mm. It mm. means when they speak, it is one, one, voice. one voice. It's just like... Let me give an example. Becky is married. Mm. When they're disciplining their child, mm. if I can figure your age, mm. <laughs> where now we need to, to do the discipline. It means Becky and Jeff have to be on the same page. Mm. That the child will not say, mommy is better and daddy, daddy is, that, 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 that is more harsh. It's not funny anyway to be yes. told that. <laughs> you, you, you cannot say that mm. when, even when you're thinking of the God, mm. the Godhead. You cannot even think about that mm. because God the Father with his love, mm. allowed the son to 
come and die on the mm. cross. And still the same, mm. the Holy Spirit is also here with us. Mm. We, are not, we are not left by ourselves. So mm. I really feel mm. privileged mm. actually to be on this earth mm. um, and to enjoy the privileges of salvation mm. and to enjoy the privilege, privileges that there is one God, there is one baptism, mm. everything is one, one, one. Mm. And when I pray to, to my Heavenly Father, in fact, right now I'm just thinking, any, the three of them are listening to, to me, you, you know, and mm. you, I'm that special, <laughs> you know, I'm mm. so special. Mm. So, um, let's embrace God. Amen. Let's embrace God in mm. our hearts and we embrace each other mm. with our diversities. Mm. Because I should see you, Romona, and mm. appreciate you mm -hmm. for what you bring to mm -hmm. the table. Mm -hmm. There are things that God has blessed you with that... I'm not blessed with that, mm -hmm. and I'm blessed differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Something Amen. else that I, I, I found rather interesting as Janet was speaking mm. is that I wonder why we are choosing to, like, why are we now coming up with all these other things mm -hmm. when Paul is writing and trying to manifest the existence of one, mm. the fact that it is all in one. There is no longer two. Jesus broke down the separation mm. and he has made two one, thereby making peace. And in, if you look at the appeal he makes in verse 3 of Ephesians 4, is that endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the, in the bond, bond of, of peace. peace. So that the fact that this unity is a fact, it's existing, now you and I, having known about it, are called upon to keep it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that we are to endeavor. Endeavoring calls upon us on a duty to do something to maintain the unity that exists. Mm -hmm. And that's why when Paul is calling us to a life of long suffering, to a life of patience, to a life of humility, we cannot be those people who say mm -hmm. that I am patient, but here is where my patience is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. my, po my patience has boundaries. My patience has boundaries. No, that's not the call. The call is to endeavor, to go beyond no. where your patience Yen is. Paul is not telling you, be gently up until uh -uh. this point. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he had earlier told us mm -hmm. that uh, in, uh, in Ephesians 3, 19, now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask God, imagine. Mm. So when he tells us that gentle, this is your gentleness, this is how it should reach, he <laughs> should knows that someone can make it exceedingly <laughs> abundantly Amen. so that you cannot say, ah, I love people, but this is where my love mm -hmm. reaches. You know, mm -hmm. we, ha we have those moments that yeah. have been patient, but here, Imeisha. Imeisha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you are that kind of a person where, where who tells themselves that, you know, I'm from this tribe and from this tribe, us, our anger is up there. You know, Paul is telling you you are a Christian and you need to practice patience, gentleness, and Amen. humility. Amen. <laughs> so we move to the Tuesday part. Uh, hmm. The exalted Christ, giver of gifts. And we are just getting this from the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to 10. I'll ask, uh, Zanet, could you please read for us? Ephesians chapter 4, 7 to 10. The Bible says, mm -hmm. I'm reading from the King James Version, mm -hmm. um, Ephesians 4, 7 to 10, verse 7 says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivi captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? Up, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. Amen. Amen. I'll just ask Becky, we're talking about the exalted Christ, giver of gifts. What are some of the gifts that Christ gave us? You know, uh, the other time I was attending a children's Sabbath and then one of the children said, parents, please keep your promises. When you promise your children gifts, give them. <laughs> what are some of the gifts that Christ gave, promised and did he fulfill that promise? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of those interesting texts um, because the verse 7 that you just read says, but to each one of us. Mm -hmm. Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's mm -hmm. gift. Mm -hmm. From the outset, none can say they were not given mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. And practically speaking, Christ writes in Matthew, 
about the parable of talents mm. and see there's even one who's there's mm. someone who's given one one there's one who had three there's one who <laughs> had five mm-hmm. so in this context Paul affirms that to the Ephesians that to each one of us was a gift given. was given mm. according to the measure of Christ's gift mm. and before we even without delving into the enumeration of the gifts that you read in our key text mm. one of the things that stands out is that he ascended on high mm. he led captivity captive mm. and gave gifts to men mm. the fact that captivity was made captive mm. uh, in verse chapter 2 refers to it as he gave he put to death the enmity mm. uh, he, he refers to it a, a, and says that he broke down the wall mm. of separation mm. that that in itself is the gift that we that we speak about and we recognize that indeed mm-hmm. we are sitting mm-hmm. in heavenly places mm-hmm. i remember the other time we were just we were joking about the foreigners mm-hmm. placard mm-hmm. no foreigner no beyond foreigner this, be point. this point so mm-hmm. when we read this text that tells us that the gifts that we that were given to men um, came as a result of captivity being made captive mm-hmm. it gives us joy in our hearts to know that we are not just by passers we are mm. no longer aliens mm. to the commonwealth of israel mm. we are no longer strangers mm. but we are members of the household mm. of god mm. each one of us has these gifts that paul is speaking about as being uh, made manifest mm. and helping the entire church mm. and so it's important uh, once again he says in verse 10 He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. So we have a situation whereby God um, Paul is writing the Ephesians and is reminding them that in Christ Jesus we have an abundance of gifts. Amen. In Christ Amen. Jesus none is left out. Mm. In Christ Jesus each one of us has an opportunity to, to serve, enjoy. to enjoy mm. and to work mm. in building the mm. unity of Christ. Mm. And he says uh that he might feel all things you remember Amen. in at the end of chapter 1 of Ephesians we said that Christ mm. um was made the head of all things the head of the church mm. which is his body mm. for he himself feels all in all mm. so one more time we are in this particular instance where god is telling us that these gifts have mm. been given to mm. us mm. that he might feel all things amen so these gifts are towards a particular end amen. so that if amen. i do my honest part mm. and rumona does her honest part mm. and janet does her honest part then the end is actually met amen. but if amen. we get to the point of segregation where you Rumona holds her gifts you and Janet hold. holds her gift mm. and I hold my gift then we cannot reach the end mm-hmm, or if we mm-hmm. compete over my gift it means that the fulfillment that we are all waiting for in the fullness of the dispensation of the times mm. is not made manifest amen yeah. amen. amen thank you uh Janet I don't know what are your thoughts on the exalted Christ giver of gifts um when i look at it um the exalted Christ the giver of gifts Christ himself became you know a gift for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We know when we even pray sometimes we say we thank you God for the gift of salvation. Amen. Because Amen. if it was not for Christ, I don't we think we'll it. even be in existence mm-hmm. right now. I think <laughs> most of us <laughs> have been gone, you know. Mm-hmm. But because of the gift of salvation. Mm-hmm. It's really a very great gift we cannot even fathom we cannot even comprehend mm. i think when we go to heaven mm. we will really understand mm-hmm. so as as christians i think we should spend more time mm. reading the word of god Amen. to also understand Amen. the plan of salvation mm-hmm. because once we understand the plan of salvation we'll really see how important this gift is amen amen two also when christ resurrected mm-hmm. because he's exalted you know mm. it means he came from he died and resurrected mm. it means He himself also was presented as a, as a gift because he became the first fruit mm. you know and we also know that during that day of resurrection other graves were opened mm. and people were seen walking in Jerusalem mm. and guys were like hey, mm. this guy was was dead the other day or some years I back I wonder you see if it will be in africa hey. Hey, people that say now this is a big mganga you yeah. know this is a spirit oh, this is a spirit <laughs> yeah yeah so mm. by christ being our the first fruit mm. you know the sacrifice he did on the cross mm. god the father 
accepted it Amen. and said it is paid in full. Mm-hmm. That's when, when Becky says, you know, uh, we remember in uh, Genesis 3.15, mm-hmm. that's what happened on the cross. Mm-hmm. That, you know, Christ had to deal away with this death completely, mm-hmm. you know, and conquered. When we hear you, you know, Christ ascending to heaven and, you know, taking gifts for God as fast fruits. You know, the mm-hmm. Jews were enjoying the, the feast of the fast fruit. Mm-hmm. And that was just the type. And Christ himself had to, you know, mm. fulfill it in person, coming to, to earth and, and to fulfill it. So, um, us as me as a Christian, I'm really happy because I know there is hope. Amen. There is hope Amen. of resurrection. Amen. For some of us who have lost the loved ones, mm. please don't lose hope. Amen. Christ, by Christ dying and resurrecting, in, in presenting himself as a gift, has given us the hope that truly death will come to an end. Mm. One day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We've just talked about um, the exalted Christ and giver of gifts. I know we are just narrowing down to the specifics, like what are these gifts that we are talking about? And Paul tells us about the gifts in the same book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, all the way to verse 14. To 13, sorry. It says that he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of of the fullness of Christ. Hey, Amen. these verses when I was reading, and even now as I'm reading them, they're so powerful. They're mm. speaking to us so that, to, you know, Becky is telling us that we cannot get to a point where we are competing about our gifts. True. That I'm looking at Janet and I'm seeing Janet is able to do these things so well in church. She, Janet is our treasurer. So I am like, eh, I also want to be like Janet. I'm forgetting that I've been given my own gift. Because mm. here Paul tells us that God himself gave us this gift. Jesus mm. himself gave us this gift. So that when you see someone is a pastor, you don't start competing with mm-hmm. how they are preaching. You don't want to to what do they call this thing? When you impose someone, you want to be like Becky. You know, the way Becky stands and preaches, that's how I want mm. to be. The way Ramona stands to sing, that's how. You even now start singing like me. Mm. <laughs> you know, you, you are forgetting that God gave us each mm. one a gift. Mm. Ah, these verses were so powerful to me. I don't know how they were to use and yet then go to <laughs> Becky. <laughs> Truly, mm. with this uh, verse... You have to put yourself on check. Can we say? Yes. Mm. Because when you start thinking about somebody else and their gifts, you're not even supposed to think about, about it. Mm-hmm. Because you see, majority of us don't want to serve in the church because we compare ourselves with Amen. others. I see Becky is very good mm. with, you know, preaching and, you know, sharing. Mm. And you're Doing like, the hey, lesson here. Yeah. Mm. And you're like, Mm-mm, me, this is not for me. Mm-mm. So you take a, a, a bench. You take your back seat mm-hmm. and say, me, I'm not going to participate in church. Mm. Yet, every talent must be employed mm. in blessing others. Amen. You know? Amen. And that's bring, bringing honor to God. Mm. So you cannot, use, you cannot use your talent for yourself. Mm-mm. So it, it, it ceases to be a talent. Mm. It ceases to be a gift. Mm. So God has, has given each and every one of us mm. a gift so that we can work for him, mm-hmm. you see? So that everyone who does this work yeah, will be fulfilling his part mm. in the great plan that God had. Mm. You know, God mm. still has a plan. Mm. The plan is to redeem everyone. Mm. So what is my part mm. in, ex- you know, hastening the coming of Christ? Mm. What am I playing? Where mm. am I playing? Mm. It's not the work of the pastors. It's mm. not the work of the apostles. It's not the work of Becky. Mm. <laughs> if Becky today conducts a crusade, mm. I should not say, oh, Becky, uh, Be- Becky has done it for me. Mm. I don't need to, to do that. Yeah. Mm. So, mm. um, I think everybody has a part to play. Yes. If you say you're not gifted, how can you say you're not gifted? And you are in the body of Christ. And you're in the body of Christ. (laughs) You form the same part of the church. Mm. You sit in the same part of of the church. Mm. You you sit in that corner. Somebody sits in that corner. Baptism is one. One baptism. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. On top of that, there are so many departments in church that you can fit in. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody... like. Me, I can speak for myself. There are things I can't do. Mm. I can't preach. Mm. 
sincerely speaking. Mm -hmm. I can't do that, but I'm gifted in something else. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong for you to find where you, you yes, can place yourself. Yes, you know, sometimes yes. people think even trying to become a singer, ni mm. kujipendekeza. You know, it's mm. like, I want to be seen and all that. Mm. And it's wrong. No, mm. it's not wrong. You are using the talent that God has given you. Mm -hmm. So let's not put it to waste. Mm. We've, we've heard the story of the people who are given talents. Talent. And they wasted it. The mm. last person who went and buried it mm. and said, Master, me, I saw. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is waste of time for mm. me to use the, the talent. Mm. And you will still need it. Mm. So I just decided to bury it so that it, I keep it safe. And bring God. The master asked him, then why didn't you even take it to, to, to you know, to multiply it somewhere? Mm -hmm. You know, take it to for stock. Do it something. False humility. False humility. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. False humility. Yes. So you see, mm. um, we are expected to do something. Yes. You cannot say, I can't do it. Mm. And sit back and say, eh, Romona will do it. Mm. And you, you, you expect, how do you expect now the, the, this, the, the work of God to continue? Exactly. And you're not mm. using the gifts mm. that God. That's why people are being nyanganyuad gifts. Mm. And others are given more. more. Because they, 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 the one that they've used to work for God, God sees, ah, this person is capable. Let mm. me add to him mm. this so that my work can be done. Amen. 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 Becky, when it comes to gifts. <laughs> Something fascinating that mm. came to my mind mm. is how in our times, mm. we have people who are called apostle, prophet, evangelist, <laughs> pastor. I was going to ask that question. And my question is always like, how do you get to a point where you yourself, uh, 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 you appoint yourself like, now me today, from today, I'm apostle Romona. Well, if you ever hear such a thing, please laugh because it's a joke. <laughs> How do you wake up and start calling yourself um, Prophet Rumona? You know, at what what makes any? There's a lot of questions that I keep asking myself, but okay, let's hear so, from you. So you have one person calling, so so that there is pride in the title, yes. as opposed to the the the, the content. Mm. Because why on earth would you call yourself Apostle, Evangelist, Pastor Rumona? Mm. One would suffice. Like. <laughs> Let's see. Let mm. us see the apostle uh, apostleship in you. Let yes, us see the by their in works. You, you by will your know. fruits, we shall know you. Yes. Be that as it may, when you look at um, Paul writing, he mm. says that he himself gave some to be apostles, mm. some prophets, some evangelists, mm. some pastors mm. and teachers. Mm. And I want to be persuaded that our uh, our ministries are all in here. Mm. Like at least in a church. We statisticians usually say that in every now in the three of us, mm. there is at least an evangelist, mm. a, an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, or a, a teacher. teacher. Because those are the the fivefold ministry mm. that God has given for the working of the church. Mm -hmm. So much so that if I am the evangelist, yeah, mm. now we can break it down. Mm. Am I the digital evangelist? Mm. If I can do it well by retweeting. Mm all the posts that have been made by pastor mm. i have done my part Amen. because my and work is preached. an evangelist mm. you know do the work of an evangelist that is what paul is telling timothy yes. the evangelist is to spread the good news by all means mm. necessary so we have people who spread the news by cooking mm. they invite you mm. you they invite you to for a cooking expo and while cooking mm. they have a video mm. of perhaps a preacher mm. sharing the word of god we have people who just share leaflets. Mm. Their work is to carry those leaflets and take. Mm. They are doing the work of an evangelist. Amen. So that none of us can fold our hands behind and say, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a No, mm -mm. There, is a call, there is a group called evangelists. Mm. They can be the smiling ministry. Mm -hmm. where We usually tell people who just sit at the church entrance on Sabbath and they smile. Mm. Their smile is enough to retain you in church. Amen. So we are not going to look for, we cannot, if you say that I'm a singer, my singing would either fall within a teaching, mm. a, a pastoring, mm. apostleship, evangelism. or evangelism. Yes. So that we are not detaching it from what the core is. The core mm. is you're an evangelist, an mm. apostle, a pastor, a prophet. Mm. And the reason why this is important, verse 12 says that, for the equipping of the saints Amen. for the work. Amen. This is for equipping the saints for the work. I can imagine if the connoisseurs were not doing cooking ministry. Mm. 
many people who would be hungry the, the servants because them the levites mm -hmm. would be hungry they mm -hmm. could not serve or, or or share the word of god mm -hmm. adequately mm -hmm. so the purpose of all this ministry mm -hmm. is to equip the saints for the work of ministry mm -hmm. for the edifying of the body of christ mm -hmm. till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son mm -hmm. of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. The purpose of all this is to lead us to Christ. Mm -hmm. So if Becky can write a poem mm -hmm. and that poem would edify someone, mm -hmm. that poem should fit in the fourfold, mm -hmm. in the fivefold ministry, mm -hmm. either as a pastor, as an evangelist, as a minister. But none of us should compete to to just guzzle all of it together mm. and say, I'm a pastor, I'm an evangelist, I'm a teacher, I'm an apostle. No. <laughs> Christ has given us a space where we can fit for the sake of his church. Amen. And these gifts are not for personal Amen. gain. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, Zariet says that, uh, she tells us that you, okay, both of you, or even me, we agree that all of us are gifted differently. Mm -hmm. We agree that you cannot be a pastor, okay, and I believe that God has also ensured that in a church, in, a, in, or in our Christianity, that we are different, we are diverse, all again for the unity of what? Of the church. So you cannot sit down there and say that I'm not gifted. Please pray, like Janet tells us, spend the word time yani spend your time in the word of god pray ask god what is my gift if you do not understand you know in the world we are so driven with what is my purpose what is my career goal you know yeah. so i'm asking you what is your christian goal and who do you find that from it is god it is from his word that is where you can only find about your christian goal just know where your gift is so that you stop sitting in the on the seat, the blue seats, anyway, every Sabbath you're just sitting. <laughs> there are so many things to do in the church. Yeah. There are so many things you can do to evangelize, to teach, to preach. It is a whole big field to explore, but you can only explore through God. So we move to another interesting part, the Thursday part, growing up into Christ. And this is what I was referring to when I was talking about moving from childhood into adulthood. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 says that we should no longer be we should that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the tri trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of this deceitful plotting. You know, uh, the other time we say that there is no way you are going to graduate at it. Now you have graduated in terms of grace. <laughs> but in Christianity, it demands you grow. You cannot be the same. I, I, no. Even a child, when you give birth to them, I mean, another WhatsApp group for mommies, when a child is two years and they cannot speak, it is a whole conversation that we have to sit down through. My child is not talking. So you, if we are looking at babies and we are expecting growth in them, what about us as Christians? And I'd like us to be a bit personal when handling this growing up into Christ. Are there things that you used to do? I'll start so that... <laughs> For example, well, before in my Christian growth, I used to panic a lot. I'll panic like, eh, how am I going to look? How am I going to get this money? How am I going to get this thing that I need for? How am I going to pass for my exams? How am I going to get this job? But nowadays, I've gotten to a point where I don't panic anymore because I understand that the Lord provided before. So if he provided before, even now, he will provide. That's my, my growth curve. That is my growth arc as a Christian. I don't know about Becky and Janet who wants to go first. <laughs> Growing up into Christ. Into Christ. Um, let me say for myself, mm. um, I, I've come from far. Mm. First not being an Adventist, Amen. then being an Adventist, mm -hmm. and learning things, you're like, oh, and getting what do you shocked mean? to with shocked our tabias. <laughs> our tabias as Adventists, you know, the foot washing thing, I'm like, ha, ha, yeah. how, yeah. you know? Mm. There are so many things that I've come to, to see different. Mm. Seeing a church which has so many, you know, programs that mm. you can participate in, mm. you know, and you, can, you, you, you have a talent to, 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 to participate in church. Mm. Um, I remember when I was joining youth choir some years back, mm. I walked into the church mm. 
and a group of, the group was you know the youth had gathered mm. to start singing mm. and i walked i walked uh, and w- when i reached in the middle i turned back <laughs> and left mm. but before i reached outside the door somebody had already al mm. kosha why are you going mm. please come back mm. so um i've been sometimes you know f- there's so many things that make me feel oh maybe god has not forgiven me mm. you know there's so many things i when we even doing our first vespers here mm. some few years ago and there were things when we were digging deeper into the bible mm. i'm like oh me nyo mini mwenye dhambi i i don't think i even i deserve mm. but through learning you 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 see the mercies of god mm. that god really has forgiven you you Amen. need to, to claim that promise mm. of forgiveness you need to believe and believe he has mm-hmm. forgiven you because the devil will bring all those the past things mm-hmm. that you've done yeah and, and toss like, you to and fro and like god has never forgiven you mm. and he'll never forgive you mm. and there's a day even when i was even i think i was talking to my brother javan mm. and as if we were having a discussion and i was even saying you know i think when we were having our vespers me i think even the holy spirit has left me <laughs> you know those those the, the thoughts that can come what mm. the devil just takes when he finds doubt in your in your mind he takes he over. takes charge mm-hmm. and when now those things are, are not there anymore mm-hmm. so it's part of of growing in christ amen, yeah amen. yeah so um mm. on my end i think it's been um uh, the growing experience have been rather interesting mm. for starters in the first instance i was just struck with avalanche of information like a lot of information mm-hmm. and so i felt like i was i could not give an account of things i was hearing mm. you know in when you join in a faith I'd been studying my scripture and so I would be more like my, my ears were open to listening to a lot of things mm. and I didn't know exactly what to place what where because mm. you, you know being adventist you know there can be several adventist Age. controversies <laughs> <laughs> and you want to just settle into the truth and mm. find out what exactly is working so on on that front what worked for me was actually sitting down and reading the bible amen a whole mm. amen and just settling myself into these things i'm believing mm. in so that enabled me to affirm my faith so that when someone is standing for for me One of those things that I can't help is that when someone is standing before me to preach or speak or teach mm-hmm. my mind goes to with them like what verse are you reading mm-hmm. proper interpretation mm-hmm. as in my mind just goes into it because for having read the entire bible mm-hmm. I somehow can place what someone is saying where and I would be like mm-hmm. I don't think that's what the person says you know <laughs> like I can go and ah I don't think that's what scripture says mm-hmm. so I'll really need to confirm mm-hmm. so the on that has helped me not to be tossed by doctrine mm-hmm. because for some reason i feel like i can put someone head on and say mm-hmm. you allege this mm-hmm. prove it mm-hmm. and being a lawyer doesn't help because for <laughs> us you alleges must prove mm-hmm. so i'm always quick to do mm-hmm. that on a personal level i have i i, I struggled a lot with uh, with uh, letting god handle things Amen. because I, i i naturally i'm a fast born so i believe that action you, you and reaction are equal and opposite mm. i'm yes. in control mm. i plan my mm. day one two three this has to go here mm. so when things don't go the way i want and i'm told to pray i'm asking how now like how do you want me to pray this thing I w- this is the input prayer. this is the input <laughs> so what has come to work over mm. time is that i've learned to trust god's wisdom mm. i remember yeah. that day i was just praying and said god you are too wise to err uh, mm. and i'm just going to trust your wisdom so that statement has kept me going so many times Amen. in my christian work where by things don't go as i planned mm. and my only because is god i am just trusting your wisdom mm. because you have the benefit of knowing the end from the beginning Amen. I just want to I'm just waiting. You know that meme of me waiting to see <laughs> how mm. God is dealing with something I prayed about. I I just sit back and say God I'm waiting to see your wisdom manifested. Amen. And true to his word, the precious gift of time keeps giving because mm. with the lapse of time, I surely look back and say God was wise. Yeah. yeah. So for me that has been my greatest growth. strength and mm. growth mm. that mm. I have come to learn. to trust God's wisdom. Amen. In Amen. my 
events in my life in everything i can say my faith has found a resting place amen, amen. 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 <laughs> thank you so much this has been a wonderful lesson uh we are still in the book of ephesians how to follow jesus in trying times in these trying times God demands that we stay unified. That is what Paul has been emphasizing in this lesson that lesson 7 the unified body of Christ. To Paul unity is indispensable attribute or mark of the church. So if we are not united as a church, we are not aligning ourselves according to the will of God. And we've gone through so many we've talked about so many things and the most important part that i'd like to leave us is when i'd like you to think about to reflect on is growing up into christ are you growing up am you are stagnant as you're sitting down to write about your your new year resolutions and ticking things that i have achieved this i have achieved this in the world Are you doing the same for your spiritual life? I believe if you do that for your spiritual life, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else shall be done what be added unto you. If you do that, if you take into account everything, your growth in Christianity, I'm so sure God will take care of the other part. I'm so glad that you have joined us and I'm so glad that you have learned so much and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to understanding and to stay on course with us even as we head to lesson 8. Becky please close for us with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Divine Father, it is us you have taught us, you have been with us. These are things heavenly. How shall we comprehend them without your spirit? Mm. Now we pray for a double portion of your spirit mm. to strengthen us to open the understanding of our hearts that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will fill us with all the fullness of Christ mm. that we will know you the only true God and serve you in spirit and in truth to whoever is listening to us and is struggling with sin mm. forgive them lord whoever is reaching out to you and they may start a new walk with you may you order their steps in righteousness that iniquity may not have dominion over them as we transition to other programs for the sabbath we commend the safe keeping of our souls into your hands that you alone who is our ebenezer will guide us safely all the way thank you for the assurance of answered prayer we ask in jesus name amen amen, amen.